I'm joined now by Terry Brown for uh, an edition of The Extra Show. Terry, we got to know each other very well last year during the season that, of course, no fans were here because we were producing the Match Day Show, which was a lot of fun between us. And who would have thought that in the new season uh, we're actually working together again, but in, you're back on first team duties. Um, I really want to welcome you to the club officially and uh, just to say that you've had just over a month in charge now. How, how have you found the club in general since you've been back? Uh, obviously very proud to come back and uh, delighted to come back. I've had almost like a, a two year sabbatical and um, I've always watched games but it's not the same as being involved. It was a lot of fun working with you, watching somebody else's team, whether you've done well or, or not. Um, it's a lot harder when it's your, your own team and, and you know my job basically here is, is to support Mark and to work with the board and liaise between Mark and the, the board and to, to look at the <coughs> not just the short term but the uh, bigger plan going on uh, as, as far as the club looking to re-establish themselves at the top end of the league rather than the bottom. So some significant differences for when you were actually here as a manager. Could you just sort of maybe elaborate on, on the differences? You're the man, I suppose, that is totally responsible when you're number one. Yeah, I don't envy Mark. He's got a very difficult job on his hands. Like you pointed out, we've been here a month now and uh, we're working mainly with, with um, Danny Schwood and Danny Schwood had talented players in it, but it doesn't doesn't wholly fit the remit for, for what Mark's looking for. <clears throat> um, it's quite evident, even before the first month that we've been here, that the the league is, to get out of this league, you've got to have a physical presence. I don't feel we have enough physical presence at the moment. Um, if I look at the, the Bromley side, if I look at the, the very successful Sutton side that were managed by Matty and Jason Goodliffe, two good friends of ours, um, theirs was a real big solid outfit who played exciting attack and direct football. Uh, Mark's remit is much more possession based and we don't apologise for that, it will be a possession based and we, we're going from Mitch kicking the ball out to a front hand <coughs> to Mitch playing the ball out. So, you know, we're not making excuses for that. We, we take on board the crowds, uh, I thought quite a funny um, song of you know, we pass the ball, we pass the ball. I thought that was, and I, we understand where their frustration is coming from in as much as they come to a game to enjoy their football and to see us win games of football. They've, they've seen us lose nine games <coughs> of football at home. And at any level, that's not acceptable. Um, how can we change that around short term? We've got to, we've got to stop hemorrhaging uh, poor goals from throw-ins, long throws, from corners, from set pieces and we're working, trust me, working every day at that. <clears throat> it's not just as simple as working every day, we need a few more uh, bigger lads with a, a little bit more physical presence. We're looking at a couple now, we've brought uh, Jimmy in who is, is a big beast and, <clears throat> and has power running with the ball. Um, and it has been more difficult than we envisaged because we thought we would have, have won more games than we have. Obviously, it, it goes deeper than that. You get knocked out of the FA Cup, which we desperately wanted a good run in. The club deserves a good run in. And, and to go out for a, a well-organised team, two leagues below you, is never going to be acceptable anywhere, and, and the least of all here. We have to, we are in a position where we have to make sure that it isn't doom and gloom on the training ground because we have to come back and, you know, I have to try and lift Mark and Tom and Mark and Tom have to lift the players after what is a pretty dismal, well, it's an absolutely dismal start to the season. Um, I know from a fan's point of view, you don't want to hear um, 
there is progress made in the training ground because there is, there visibly is progress made on the training ground and there visibly is uh, progress made in the pitch. It's irrelevant if I'm, if I'm paying my £20 or I'm a season ticket holder, I expect to see my team. I don't want to go on home unhappy, I want to go home um, having a beer and thinking, yeah, that was great, that was great. So we know short term we've got to address the, the, the plague of giving sloppy goals away. Um, I, I, I do feel sorry for Mitch, I think Mitch got some uh, um, uh, stick on Tuesday night. And all I'd say about Mitch is he's a fantastic pro, he does love this club. Uh, he has never had a goalkeeping coach since he's been there. So um, we have now uh, brought in a kit man, and, and trust me, any, anybody that's hired by this club needs to be doing at least two or three jobs. And uh, if, I look at, if I look at Bob, he's doing about 43 jobs. Um, the kit man, is a qualified goalkeeping coach so he can work with Mitch and we're looking at we've got an opportunity to uh, blood one of the youngins and I think well is that really fair on them at the moment when we're without our two main centre halves you know um, who give us not just height but they give us communication and I can't emphasise when you've got a young side how important communication is and there's a lack of communication out there that comes with experience and we lack that at the back. If I look at, uh, should we strengthen in the goalkeeper, it, it's, it's maybe something that, that we, we, we need to look at doing. And uh, to, to both take the pressure off Mitch and not really load it on one of the kids. So we're, we're, we're looking at uh, the possibility of a, a lone keeper coming and where we are with the centre-halves, we're, we're at least a month, six weeks away from Giles and um, Kevin coming back. So uh, we're going to have to juggle that about. We brought the young boy Jordan in, uh, who, who I thought done quite well alongside Cody. And um, we're going to have to look at uh, where else we need to strengthen but we're aware that we've got we brought some talented boys into midfield i think in particular um venom has been i think a revelation for us um we just extended his loan and uh, that will be a, a real plus for us we're um, really happy with the boys we brought in there i think scott gives us that experience scott's the only one in our dressing room that's ever won anything and you think, <clears throat> I mean, that is. I look back at the various clubs I've been at, and when we've been successful, we've had a group full in that dressing room of winners. And this is a group full of talented individuals, and that's what they are, who haven't won anything. And um, in the same way, winning becomes a habit, losing can become a habit. So we can talk till we're blue in the face, but it's about putting them three points on the board, hopefully starting a Barnet on Saturday. And um, again, they're buying into Mark's training, and Mark's a fantastic coach alongside Tom. And they're buying into that, but they need that to be reinforced by wins. And in the same way, I hope I'm explaining where the management team's coming from to our fans, but at the end of the day, we've got to start winning games, to start winning the fans back over. There comes a bit of pressure when you're at the wrong end of the table, Terry. I recall your time here and when I think of Terry Brown as having quite lots of success and I and I think you have. Is it a different ball game now though at the other end of the table? And if even you experienced the situation that we now find ourselves in? Yeah, I, th I think it's, there's obviously a lot more pressure when you're um, you know, I still see this club as a football league club, and it should and always will have, whilst well, I'm anything to do with it, have aspirations of becoming a football league club again. You know, you hear you hear comments from fans saying, "Well, uh, maybe if we went down to 
the blue square south or whatever it's called now, the, then we would be more sustainable. Part of my remit when I come in was to look at the club because there's plenty of basket case clubs about. Um, this club, I'd done my research before I come in, it wasn't enough that I, I'd been here and, and, and loved the club. It, it, it's like, well, how is it run? How are, are we in massive debt? We're not in massive debt, that's, that's been cleared. We are a sustainable club with a sustainable model. So I can't come in and say to Shaheed and the board, we need this, this, this and this because the club's gone bankrupt in the past and there's no way the fans want that. So th these fans are realistic. They, they want us to be sustainable. They don't want us to <coughs> stretch ourselves to the point where we're going bankrupt again. But they do not envisage us uh, being at the bottom end of the table. We are not um, feelings for the Blue Square South. The, uh, I don't buy into the, the, the thing of we could build again from there. No, we need to build again from the National League. It, it's the level that's appropriate for where we are at the moment. And, and I would like to add, I, I did do my research here, and there are basket cases about, trust me. And I looked at the structure underneath, I looked at the work that Walheed has done uh, alongside Ross, and it's fantastic. We have got a fantastic youth setup, we have got a fantastic academy. I only look at the boys, when, when you go, oh, we've got 31 boys on the books or whatever, you know, we've got like nine boys who are our youngsters who are training full time with us so we get to work with at least sort of 22 players or Mark gets to work with them. Um, I look at the under 18s in the FA Youth Cup, I'm, I'm gobsmacked with the, the quality there and you can tell they've been very well coached. I'm watching them thinking, yeah, I like that shape and it takes years and years so we've got that in place so um, it's now our turn to, to make sure that we, we've we got the first team platform for them to come through in their journey, in, in a proper journey that they can come through into the first team. Can we bang those young talented boys in the side at the moment? No, we can't. It, 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 it's, you know, Tommy could come in, Ellis could come in, any one of them talented boys, we've got Farnborough and, and Met Police, uh, they, they could come in as individuals and, 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 and do okay. Uh, on block, they're not ready. And again, I think you touched on Mark. This is a really physical, it's probably, I, I, I got to watch uh, quite a lot of AFC Wimbledon games in League One. And they've got teams like Sunderland, Portsmouth, Ipswich, etc. And, and, and they're physically, obviously, fit as fiddles and that, but you look at the, the Bromleys coming down there and Barnet who are about to face, they're like, massive great lumps and in fact that's unfair they're, they're, they're good sides and they're, but they're very physical and it's no good whinging that oh blooming all six foot six who are we going to get marking in we need some six foot pluses in there and we need to start winning the long throws we need to start winning or finding ways of stop conceding from it because uh, it is a balance when when i say mark wants to play possession based passing football, we're not naive enough to think you've got to mix that. You you, you know, you, the keeper's going to have to go and, and hit somebody longer. You're going to have to have somebody who can shield the ball and uh, a target man. You try going looking, I am looking for a target man without a recruitment policy. We haven't got uh, a recruitment policy on board here. We haven't got recruitment uh, facilities, we haven't got a scout and for us to, and for Mark to be successful and the club to be successful in the future, that is something we've got to look at. We've got to look at the current finance, yeah, we need a centre forward more than we need uh, a scout, yeah, I get the point there, but you have to have these things in place if you really are planning to take the club to another level, and another level at the moment is mid-table security.
Um, it's quite clear the situation we're in. But what positives have you seen in, in the first month? Uh, I, I'm hearing the training facilities are, are, are looking to be excellent. Yeah, but I, I've got to um, congratulate Shahi because he, he, his contacts have, have given us probably the best training facilities in in the league. I can't see many would have much better than that. They're, at the moment, there's they're still building part of it. They're still building the AstroTurf and they're, they're still work carrying on so we, we haven't got a perfect introduction in there but that's by no means an excuse we have got a full-time squad in and the training facilities are important when you're showing the player around um, I'd bring him in here for a nighttime game how that game started off Tuesday and I understand the, the fans frustration that was like the old wreck to me, the, the drum was going, they were fully up for it, we were gonna, that was gonna be our first home winning eight and, and everything, and then you give away a soft goal and it's, and then the players go bang and then you give another soft goal away. Like, fully understand, but they're in the bad ground to be at and, and, and rocking than, uh, than this. If I could take us back to a training facility, players nowadays, you know, that they are slightly, different generation to the ones I work with and you have to put an arm around them and they expect good training facilities. These are first class training facilities with a facility where they can come and have breakfast, do a proper warm up, a stretching, everything in lovely facilities, train on lovely AstroTurf and you're guaranteed to train there and then you know, shower facilities afterwards and lunch afterwards. And I tell you, Mark is working in the morning and afternoons. And in fact, if anything, I have to tell him to Mark in there. They are working very hard at the moment. And uh, it is a tendency when things ain't going right to push them and push them and push them. And it, it, it's not lack of effort, it's a lack of belief there. And that changes, yes, with the work programs you do, and there is no other alternative than to get your head down and, and, and grind out. But I, in fact, it's a good term, really. We need to grind out an ugly 1-0. I want us to see us win ugly. When you're on a position-based side and you want to play football, it's like you have to play brilliant football every week to win. Well, in the other format, and blimey, my A side used to batter teams and that didn't play any football, you win ugly more often than you win pretty. And when you analyse it, even, you know, Gary's fantastic football inside down here, it didn't always win fantastically, but it, 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 had, it had the ability to win ugly sometimes. And, and I'd love us to see us dig out a really ugly win, backs to the wall, heading it, kicking it, and nick an ugly goal ourselves, because, uh, there is not, and you hear people talk about, oh, we're playing football the right way. What is that? The right way is winning on a Saturday, sending your fans home happy. Um, I don't see any fans going up, up the pub out of the game going, boy, we're winning and I've played some good stuff today. Yeah, we got beat 3 0, but um, we played some nice stuff. It, 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 it's irrelevant. Uh, possession's irrelevant. Um, shots off target are irrelevant. They're like, yeah, there are days where you really work their keeper and you play well and you think, oh, we weren't very lucky. We are not sitting here today making excuses for anyone. We haven't lost nine games at home by being unlucky. We're not good enough, so we have to get better. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> there were green shoots against Bromley, and funny enough, I know that everyone is disappointed if you lose, but there were some fans saying that we, we've turned the corner, and I think. That kind of worked against us for the Weymouth yeah. game because I think everybody came into the Weymouth game expecting this was going to be the yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and of course, and people went away saying that it was absolutely rubbish. When you sit down and analyse the game, we actually probably outpassed Weymouth in that game as well. But it was quite clear that they didn't have to do a lot to score their goals. No. And we we had to pass like the old Arsenal team and pass it in the net just to get a chance. It was definitely, so we had enough of the ball, but at both ends of the, where it was important, it wasn't quite working. I, I think that's a valid point, and I look at um, 
the National League, which on BT, and uh, we see highlights of every game you, you can watch nowadays. And I would say out of all the Premier and all the EFL leagues, the Nation League is the one league where set pieces count more than any other. I think it's 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 not criminal, but it's you have to get your house in order with set pieces. You otherwise you come away from that going, okay, look at the two goals we scored against Bromley. We they were beautiful against three real big boys at the back. And we out we, we, we passed through and went through the line, scored two beautiful goals. But look at the goals we conceded, like a long throw, a, a, a corner. You can't keep saying we conceded them goals when we're unlucky. It's not bad luck. It's we either haven't got the personnel or we haven't worked hard enough at it. And I'm not coming here to make excuses. I'm coming here to say we're hearing what you're saying and we're hurting every bit as much. You touched on it there, you said that we played well against Bromley and then you think we're going to turn the corner. I come here thinking we're going to turn the corner. I come here listening to that, the East Bank there playing their drum and singing away red and blue army and I'm thinking, you know, it's all set up for us here. Um, Mitch made a great save early on. We could have been one nil down early on. Um, and then you get back in and it's the nature of the goals as well, isn't it? If a, if a boy scores a worldie from 35 yards, he goes, oh, we'll get on with it, yeah, great, or a great goal. They haven't been great goals. They've been, oh, wow. You know, goal to get an hand to it, goal. And, you know, something goes off of one of our own players and thinking, come on. And it is, it, it is easy, and if I hadn't been doing it for 35 years, I'd be doing it. And, and sometimes I feel myself going, I oh, ain't fair, we're not getting a rub of the green, we're not getting You can't be bottom of the league, or second from bottom of the league, and keep blaming the rub of the green. We've got, a, we've got to make changes to how we set ourselves up, how we defend set pieces, and how we, how we change a losing mentality into, yeah, we didn't play that well today, but we got a point, why are we worried? It's, it's a bit like the Dover result, the only result that we've won, and that was as ugly as hell, um, but you ground out a result and, and you come back on a coach feeling a bit better than you did when you were driving this. Let's talk about the fans. Um, we've both been lucky, I think, uh, as members of the club where fans have been good to us. I've yeah. had, but we've earned that probably. Um, I've had a few differences with some of the fans recently, maybe some of the younger ones, and I get their frustrations. Um, I thought they were excellent on Tuesday uh, and the amount that turned up and the way that they were singing. Perhaps didn't enjoy some of the more, <laughs> some of the chance where it might have hurt some of yeah, our players, yeah. but that's only because during the game I want them to be, yeah. you know, fully behind yeah. us. But it is difficult for them and I have to give them credit on, on Tuesday uh, for being here. And it must be difficult to see, like for all of us, your team you know, we, I can't get away from it, Terry. We, it's nine home defeats, and we're yeah. sending our, I don't like to call them customers, but we're sending our customers, our supporters, our sponsors, home frustrated, right, or potentially worse, unhappy yeah. each game. Yeah, and even the commercial manager's job is a lot harder, Mark. If you're winning, it's a hunky dory, isn't it? And, yeah. and people are queuing up, and uh, if you're losing nine home games, I think your job's a, a lot harder. So, yeah, it reflects on everyone. Um, I, the, the, the only one I feel a bit hung out to try is Mitch, and uh, that, is, that is, I do feel a little bit sorry for him. But uh, that's football, you know, and, and uh, you, you, you reap the rewards when you're winning, and that's everything hunky dory. And if you have a volatile, young group, and I'm really pleased that you said about the youngsters there, sometimes obviously they're the more volatile, but we've got to encourage youngsters to join this club because in a, a lot of non-league clubs are, are very um, much older based and, and we are obviously uh, got a, a lot of older based fans and we need their children and grandchildren coming to watch us and uh, support us in, in a vocal manner, it does, it does lift the players. Well, I agree, and, and even though 
Oh, I mean, I don't have a massive issue with them. It's more along the lines of being a little bit derogatory. I'd rather everyone be together. But it's easy to say that being together, of course, when you're getting results. Yeah. So I do understand frustrations. Uh, one last question, Terry, and it's, it's the R word. Um, there's been a few people suggest that perhaps the board want to be relegated. I've never had one on my CV. I couldn't think of anything further than the truth. Um, perhaps a little rallying call. I'm not trying to set you up, but it's none of us want to uh, be relegated from this thing. No, I mean we came to the interview process uh, with the board, and you know we wouldn't have taken this job if if we thought we were going to be anywhere near the relegation zone. Yes, it's proven a little harder than we envisaged, but. The board made it perfectly clear that um, relegation is not on, on, on their, their horizon. And how supportive the board, I mean all the board have been very supportive. All these board members have put loads of time, loads of effort and loads of their own personal money into this club. And uh, they want to see us grow as, as, as a sustainable club. So, you know, we, we don't, like we have pointed out before, we don't want to be bankrupt. But uh, we've, had no, we've had nothing but support from the chairman and the board, and it's our job now to um, mould this group of players into a, a winning culture rather than a losing one. And uh, trust me, there's no way in a million years this club um, and anybody in this club expects us to go down. Brilliant, I think that's a lovely note to finish and thank you for spending some time with us today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if the fans can hear, hear my voice in the background, the, the only way is just for the players to work harder, uh, for us to work harder, for the commercial manager to work harder, and if the fans can stick with us and get us through this, what is undoubtedly a tricky time. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Are you in the shop? Look below for more information. Click here for the next video, click here to subscribe.